but you need dry air to hold the charge. And so, so now we'll just leave that. I'll leave that. Yeah, just trying to wonder. So with all you guys in here and breathing and sweating and all that sort of stuff, it gets rather humid in here, and that means the charge collapses, so we don't get a good result. As Mr. McLean said, we've got a rubber belt running over two perspex pulleys. So that's where our charge is building up and then jumping to the dome. It's actually connected to the dome. So if I pass this in here, oh, you can see that spark. Now, air is a very poor conductor of electricity. So to get a spark like that to jump, you need a really, really high voltage. So the voltage you can see jumping across there could be up to about 20,000 volts. But of course, the charge, while it's got a very high voltage, it's a very low current. So in other words, you won't get electrocuted. But if it actually jumps onto me, it's very painful. It gives you a very big shock. Also, we don't, we're not allowed to let students touch it anymore because if you had a heart defect, you wouldn't know about it and you got that small shock. Most of the time it just hurts for most of us. But if you had a heart defect and we weren't aware of it and you got that shock, it could stop your heart and put you into cardiac arrest. So just for safety yeah. precautions, we won't be touching it. So, the thing that Mr McLean's got up there with the hair standing on him, we don't really need to do that anymore because if I just put this one up here, it does it for us. So, what do you think is happening there? Think about, you've heard the same opposites attract. So, if the charge is the same, it repels. So what's happening is, when that's charged, you know, I can actually move that around, be careful. <coughs> and they both hold the same charge, they repel each other, so that's why it's standing up. <coughs> the reason I'm using this is this is actually earth, so the charge is actually jumping, jumping to the discharge ball and going to earth, so I don't get electrocuted. And of course, I'm hanging under the rubber part of this. If I hang onto there, it'll jump on me. In the little container up there, we have some little polystyrene balls, and they're covered in graphite. And the graphite actually conducts electricity. So, like the little nylon fibers there, as they get charged, they repel, or if they get charged the other way, they actually. And of course, as they actually hit the top there, it discharges them. And they fall away and then they get charged and they go back up. Just this that's charged, it's this whole area. So if I walk in there when it's raining and put my finger there, I get zapped. Inside here, we've got in that end, we've got a little neon light. The other end, an exposed wire. So as I pass this in, <coughs> when we get to a certain point, we can tell where it's. Charge. For those standing over there, you see that little orange light? Yeah. So, so he'll work for you guys, he'll do one. I'll come around that side. Sorry. So what's actually happening is the charge is out as far as the end of this, yeah. this rod. Right. <coughs> this is actually starting to die already with the Oh, 
I'm just yeah. surprised what it was. Did you can actually see that light flickering there? Oh, yeah. Just a little orange light right on the end. I see. Yeah. You guys see it over there? Yeah. Right. Oh, how many boys did you have? Oh, how many boys did you have? Oh, how many jumping to this and going down through the wire and going to earth. Now we're going to run it through the tube. Oh, see what happens. Oh. Oh. It's charging the... Oh, it's a light! There we go, can you see the light? Yeah. Oh. So, the lights in here are actually new ones and they actually have an electronic device that starts them. But if you've got old fluorogenes, they used to have a thing called a star, this little round thing that used to sit up above the tube. And to get these to start up, they had a really high charge, and then the electricity takes over once it's charged. So what we're actually doing there is doing what happens with the starter for a fluorotube. But of course, it's only static electricity, so you haven't got a constant flow. So as soon as the charge goes through the gas, it lights up, but it hasn't got a constant flow going through to keep it alight. And you can see already what I said about the humidity, that the sparks are getting smaller because the air around this isn't dry. See before we were getting a real big start spark. <laughs> Now it's hard to get spark at all. And if we stay in there for another 10 minutes, we probably wouldn't get a spark at all. Michael D, can I have that video that's later? Can I just find that box? That's about it. That's all we can do. Michael D, chop us your phone number. All right, let's thank Mr. Asimov.